and was not very good. And, uh, oh, this was, actually, this story started a little, started the day before. The day before, I had a, I was, had a damn search mission. And <coughs> the scheduled dogs had been giving me the searches and, and escorts were the torpedo planes around the fleet that were, that were anti-submarine patrols and, and garbage flights like that. And I, the day before this, I was, I had a search. And on the way out, I was, I was really kind of upset at him. He was an acceptable word. And uh, I stopped at his desk and I said, Charlie, I've had nothing but these garbage flights for the last two weeks. And if I don't start getting my share of the fighter sweeps and the escort missions, I'm going to punch you right in the mouth. And he looked at me kind of startled, <coughs> and I walked off and I flew my flight. Well, the next day I woke up early in the morning. I hadn't seen the flight schedule yet, but God, I had a terrible belly ache. Uh, oh, Jesus, I, I went up to the ready room. Didn't get any worse or any better, I mean, and, and I, <coughs> I, it hurt so much that I thought I, I should go and, and confess that I, I hurt. I'm going to get out of this flight. But I'm, I don't dare go talk to Charlie and tell him I'm, I'm sick. And, and, uh, so uh, I went on the flight. <coughs> There were eight of us on a fighter sweep to Hainan, which was 300 miles away. So we took off, went on in, the weather wasn't very good, lots of clouds around. And on the way in, oh, maybe, maybe uh, 50 miles from Hainan, um, we passed three airplanes from another ship. One was an SB-2C dive bomber and, and two, two uh, LCATs escorting them. They were on a search mission. And uh, they were on, on the deck as well as we were because of the weather. There was no sense of being up high. You couldn't see anything. So <coughs> and we got in got into the island, and on one side of it, it had opened up enough that there was a, a kind of a, a big hole in there that you could fly around in. <coughs> and it was, oh, uh, tops, tops of the hole were probably about eight or 9,000 feet. So we went in and made a big circle around, and we, we're heading back out again, and I looked up, and here was an SB-2C going down in flames, and an Hellcat going down in flames, parachutes, and I hollered, tally ho, those, those, that search outfit that we just passed are under attack behind us, and so we Oh, no, they hadn't come yet. We were just going out, and there was a, a, a Zeke came up, and, and he was right like this. We were flying along, and, and I saw him, and I ducked my nose and, and gave him a burst, and then and, and pulled up so I wouldn't run into him. And I, I thought he would turn to, to the left, and I turned to the left to meet him, but he turned to the right. And I'd, I'd hit him pretty 
pretty hard, but not hard enough to knock him down. And <coughs> we, he had turned the right, as I said, and, and then we were all in, chasing after him. And we couldn't catch him. And, uh, I fired some more long range shots at him, trying to lob some in at him. <coughs> Finally, one landing gear fell down. So I knew we got some hits on it, and, uh, and uh, but he kept going, and we could not catch him. And I, that's when I happened to look up and see the the search planes being being pummeled. Hollered, get up there and help those search guys, and I'll take care of this one. And so everybody else went up there. <coughs> And was supposedly a whole big, big fight up there, and I kept after this guy, and I could not catch him. And Zeke was faster than my own cap, and even with one landing gear hanging down, I couldn't couldn't gain on him. <laughs> Finally, I said, "Well, he's no more he's no more danger to us with his gear hanging down. He's he's." He's trying to go home, period. I'll go up and help those other guys. And so I, I turned around and went out away from where the battle was taking place up topside and trying to gain some altitude. And I was going around and I turned around and came back this way and, and uh, I was Maybe maybe four or five thousand feet, and I looked out. Way out here was was a plane coming. It got a little closer, and I could see it was a hamp. You could tell the hamp from the from the Zeke because it had it had uh, squared off wingtips. Most of the Japanese airplanes had elliptical tips to the wings and tail surfaces, and it showed up real, real plain out there like that. And so I said, well, I'll go pick him off while I'm here. And <coughs> I'm, he was, too, was trying to join the battle, but he was also taking a circuitous route around so he could come in like I was planning at a fairly good speed instead of coming up this way and being a sitting duck. So <coughs> he was above me. So I, I just headed for him head on. I didn't hear him. Pulled up at a 90 degree shot at him like this. Missed him and he nosed over, didn't catch fire or anything. He just nosed over and went straight down. I, I fell in behind him and I, I didn't shoot anymore because I didn't want to waste any more ammunition. And, but I turned on, well, I had my gun camera on, and I, so I just flicked the, the trigger of the, to the gun camera. So I'd take his picture. I took a, I wanted to get a picture as he hit the water. And I throttled back, too, because at first I was too close. I figured if, if, I, if I was still that close when he hit the water, that I wasn't going to be able to pull out. So I throttled back and took, got some distance. And finally he hit the water. And I, I, think, I think I must have killed the pilot, because the airplane never smoked or anything else. And uh, it looked like the way the plane reacted, like the pilot had just fallen over on the, on the stick, pushed the nose down, and that's where it went. <laughs> well, I started climbing back up again, and, and all these other airplanes were gone. Well, I kept climbing up, and, and finally I saw one Hellcat come out of nowhere. 
just underneath the, the overcast. And I'm way down here yet. And he is my lung and all of a sudden out of the overcast here came a, a Zeke. He sat right on this guy's tail and started shooting. And, and I thought, oh God, I gotta do something. So I pulled up and I gave the guy a little lead. I was at least 2,000 feet below him. And I started shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. And, shooting and, and finally, he started to smoke a little bit. I had gotten a couple of hits on him. And he pulled off and went back up in the clouds. And I came on and I finally got up to my wingman and or the, the other Hellcat. It turned out he was my number four man. <coughs> uh, and I gave him a signal to join up, and I headed up where I thought home was, and and the two of us pretty quick saw the the uh, the rest of our group. <coughs> there were eight of us to begin with, and there were still six of them there. Oh, there were seven. Because <coughs> that search group had two Hellcats. One was shot down, and the other one was shot up. And he, they were escorting him out towards where we, we were told would be a, a rescue submarine. And, uh, and our leader, uh, it was a CO of the squadron, uh, kept calling, calling, and finally the submarine answered. Told him the problem and subsurfaced. And this other guy for the search group finally, his airplane, his airplane was, he couldn't see the numbers on it. All of his oil had been, his engine had been hit and he'd lost all of his oil. It was all over his airplane. And uh, he had 300 miles to go, and we, and we figured that he wasn't going to be able to make 300 miles with no oil. And <coughs> got him to land beside the submarine, and the, the sub picked him up and rescued him. And then we, we headed home. <coughs> it was about almost three hours later when we got home. And I was almost out of fuel, and um, <coughs> the weather was still bad. We were down below the clouds, and I spotted our ship, and I just broke off the formation, went down and dropped the gear and flaps and hook and landed, parked the airplane, and went down and made my report, and I went to my room, climbed in bed, and, and I hurt, and I was still just terrible on uh, this whole flight. And I'd been in the air six hours. And uh, I finally I picked up the phone and I called sick bay. And fortunately a doctor answered the phone. And I, I uh, and doc, I got a terrible bellyache. I said, can you, can you send up a laxative? Maybe that'll help. And he said, no. He says, I'm not going to send anything. He says, you stay right where you are. He says, I'll be up to see you. So he came up all the way from sick bed to my room, and, and he punched me around the belly a little bit and got on the phone, and he says, send up a litter. So shortly, two sailors arrived with a stretcher, and I told him, I, said, I don't need a stretcher. I can walk back there. And the doc said, no, you can't. He said, you're riding. So they, Trucked me back down to sick bay, rolled me out on a table, and stripped my clothes off. And he stabbed me in the back with a needle, and then cut me open, and he pulled out my appendix, 